Okay. I'm going to start putting everything together. I'm going to work on my new peplum. I had to cut a new one so that it matched the lengthened hem. I increased the hem on the uh, jacket to an inch and a half. So I had to cut a new peplum another half inch longer. Just finished just finished notching it. Now I don't have much room here. I've always worked in a small area. I think I'd be lost if I had a big old table. But I don't have much room to work here. And I've got just got this old mechanical singer. 1960-something, I think. It was the last year that they made. It's a 407 red edition, I think. No, a 403A. In that era, <coughs> the cam-driven zigzags. Here's my zigzag. I keep that one in all the time. Which is, by the way, I use a very narrow zigzag on the... Yeah just cam driven system this has uh, metal gears it does not have nylon gears like the new machines do right now I did some prep work I went ahead and did a stay stitch here around this curve so I can get some good, and I'll uh, clip into it so I can get a really nice insertion. And I put stay stitching around this curve here. Now I also interlined my pieces. And when I say interline, it is Taylor's Magic or something. It is a very thin, fusible web. It's not a web, actually. It has striations in it that represent the lengthwise grain. It actually helps stabilize your fabric from stretching. See, there's no stretch there. If I did it like that, there's stretch, but there's no stretch here. This is going to give me a nice, stable area. Now, I didn't interline all of the peplum. I wanted this to flow still. If I had interlined it, it would have been too stiff. So, I've done my prep work there. I need to get in here and do some clipping of the, of the curves. And let me find my center back piece. Oh, where are you, baby? Uh, no. 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 What's that? Oh, that's the old peplum that I decided not to keep. That's got to go in the trash. I don't want to get confused. Okay, having those pieces over there confuses me because I always like to have my pieces on my left. Oh, my God. There it is. In the back. Now, your inner lining needs to be cut about a quarter to three eighths of an inch away from your seam allowance. You can see on, well, here, here's one, here's one piece, there's the front. See how this inner lining is cut away from the seam? You don't want to have it all in your seam allowance or it won't press nice. So when you lay it out on your piece before you fuse it on, go ahead and do some trimming. You can do some trimming before, but I try that and I find that I end up having to trim down again. So. It's just easier to lay the fully cut out piece on your fabric and then trim around it to give yourself some uh, a smaller piece in through here. And let's see, I got the back. That's my facing. That's my sleeve. I'll leave those two there. Okay. Let's start assembling this. Walking Dead is on. I already watched the episode earlier. I tried to do a inner lining video, but I did it through YouTube, and oh, it didn't press down well. See, I've got to go back and press this in better right there. 
might have to uh, pause the video for a minute. Yeah, I'm going to pause for a minute. Okay, I got that pressed down. Now we need to do prep work. Actually, you know, I'm an idiot. Okay, I didn't mark my notches. <laughs> and that just shows you how anxious I am to get started. Get my stuff out of the way. Ah, this one is notched. Hooray for me. I notched it. Okay, good good deal. Good deal. Bring Mr. Mighty back. When I do this, I like to start a few inches above the where the curve starts. I like to get this string off of me. I like to start about a couple inches above where the curve starts just so I can have a nice straight area to start from. And then you gently start curving it in for your stay stitch at uh, half an inch. Nothing says you have to be fast about this. If you're slow and steady, you'll get a nice curved stitching line here. you have to anticipate what the curve would be if your cutting is not perfect. Love my clippers. Go ahead and get in there and clip it. If you make it a habit to go ahead and clip your threads right after you stitch a line, then you'll never forget. All right, where are we going to start? Uh, don't clip past the stitches. Remember where your notches are. Is that a notch? No, there we are. Now you could have used a tailor tack to notch these if you want. In fact, I did it this way because this is pretty cheap fabric. I think I only paid three or four dollars a yard for it. But if you're using very expensive fabric, always use tailor tacks. In or, and I don't even like to use chalk a lot of times because it is kind of difficult to get out other than washing the garment. And if you have a dry clean on the garment, you're kind of stuck. So I prefer tailor tacks. Takes a little while, but honestly, here recently I have found that I didn't used to like hand work at all but I found that it can be very soothing to sit in the living room with a something in my lap that I need to do hand stitching on. Uh, I usually just listen to TV anyway. Very seldom do I sit and visually watch an entire program. Most of the programs I have are ones where I can follow along by the dialogue. All right, now let's get over here. And we're going to clip this curve here. There's a notch. There's a notch. So let's start going on in here. Now this, because it is a very strong curve, we're going to put more clips in there. The other one we might should do that too, but this is a concave, is it concave inward and convex outward? I think that's right. Yes, I'm looking over my glasses. I need a new prescription. <laughs> Sorry. 
I usually don't like to have any part of my ugly mug in here. And I kind of have to do it right here. If you all want to see what I'm doing. Now I like, kind of like to pull this out as I'm going to see if I can get a straight line. And it tells me where the tension is. Because that's ultimately what you're trying to get, as straight a line to sew around as possible. Okay. Now, didn't we mark the center front? Yes, we did, right there. So, how do we want to do this? Do we want to do it? I think so. Maybe not. I'll do it from this way. I'll do it from the peplum side so that I can make sure that this seam line or the seam allowances here get caught up, it, caught in there properly. Okay, there's our center front clip. right there. I don't know if you can see it. Right there. Ah. Come on down. Okay. There's our center front clip. I think that's about right there. Alright. Now that we've got that aligned, Let's go to our next notch, which is, well, don't tell me it's not going to match up. I'll be devastated. Where's my notches? There's a notch. And there's a notch. That's it. Gonna match this notch here. Looks like the other one's not gonna match up. Now the key to this is to pin baste it. Now what I'm gonna do here on my machine is base based. That way I can go ahead and take something out if I need to. So let's just pin base this in. Matching up our curve. Don't be afraid to use a lot of pins. There's nothing wrong with pins. See, so here's what we're wanting. We're wanting the smooth pin in through here. Because this is a 5 8 inch seam allowance, it is kind of difficult to get in there. And in this area, let's use these little pins. Because we're going to be putting quite a bit of pins in here. Line it up with your fingers underneath. it at the seam allowance. Move forward to the next clip and if you need to clip a little bit more there's nothing wrong with that either. Probably should have brought some music in. But if I did that, I'd want to put on my headphones and I wouldn't talk to you. <laughs> now you're probably wondering what this little flap here is going to do, and I'm going to show you here in a minute. As soon as I get this curve pin basted.
Now remember up at the top I'm just using these big pins because we don't have as much of an issue blending it in. start going with the little pins now oh my gosh it went in just almost fine yeah we need the little pins we need the little pins I think I'm getting carpal tunnels. I'm getting a lot of, I can't pick up or hold on to anything anymore. Sometimes my hands cramp and I like lobster claws. So I might end up having surgery. If I can't do the one thing that I enjoy doing and have enjoyed doing, for, let's see, forty six years. You figure out the math. Man, I'm going to be devastated. Just devastated. Okay. Now, what these little flaps up here are going to do, we still blend it in here. This notch here, that's where you're going to stop sewing. Right up there. That's a clip, actually, but you're going to stop at the edge. And you might have to use a little pin here. Because that is still part of the curve. Okay, that doesn't look too awfully bad. Okay. Now just kind of look out of here. Yeah, that's going to look nice. Real nice. Alright. I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm not checking. Okay. Again. You don't have to go fast. And I'm just basting this in right now. So we can get an idea. I'll leave my threads hanging when I baste. And remind me it's baste. <laughs> Otherwise, I might think it was sewn in. Keep working it around. Now, I always feel underneath and on top to make sure I don't have any wrinkles. Take a few stitches, stop, turn it if you need to. Give yourself some room to work with. Feel it on the bottom and on the top. You can give it a slight tug. Now, here's the reason that I wanted to do the peplum on top is this seam right here. You can give a little tug if you want to. Not too much to stretch it out. Just enough to smooth. Make sure all your little clips are part of the new seam allowance. See with right here, there's a little folded area. You've got to kind of smooth it out. doesn't want to go. So, I'm going to take a little bit of a tug in there. Try to stop with your needle down. That way if you have to lift up your presser foot, like I do a little bit here, Try to work that fold out. 
Keep your needle down so you don't move positions and where you're stitching. pull out a couple of my clips to meet. Like I said, there's no reason to go fast. Especially on curves. And I just run right off. A couple of, ah, I didn't need the back tack, but okay. And then just When I come back and stitch it, it'll be after I press it real good. Yeah, see, I'm not counting right now. I'm just making sure my pins are put in the proper place. Smooth as silk. Smooth as silk. Now when I press, I'm going to want to press everything down. Okay, because I need this flap right here to be the next seam allowance. See how that's acting? Now what you can do is to go to this under clipping, the underside, and clip down the peplum part. Okay, right here. Clip it down maybe quarter, three-eighths of an inch because you really don't like all that bulk in there. But I'm not clipping yet simply because these are just being basted together. Let's see how that drape was working. Not bad. Not bad at all. And then this... I think that inner lining worked real well. Let's press it. One thing I do run out of is, or do use a lot of is irons. When you press, you want to press the seam flat first. That will set your stitches into the seam allowance. turn you. Yes, it's a mess. What can I say? Where are you? Can't you see it? Ah! So you press your seam allowances flat. When I get to sewing, I don't care about cleaning. And you can see I've been working on a lot of projects lately. I've got, I've got a trash bag in here I started to clean up. Okay, press it all flat to set your stitches in. Now, go in underneath. Start working everything down. Give it a good steam. At least on my fabric, a good steam really gets it to lay down flat.
especially in that intersection where the center and back seam of the peplum is. And pull that little tab out to meet the new seam allowance or to create the new seam allowance down there. Okay. Now let's flip it over to the other side and give it a good steam from the other side. Make sure everything's nice and flat. You want to get this curve back here pressed nice and flat with no wrinkles. And then you want to let it cool. If you have to bring your hand underneath it to bring all that seam allowance to the bottom, go right ahead. That's pretty good. Now let's let it cool for a while. But that is a nice arc peplum right there. Very nice. I'll get in and trim that once I sew it for good. But we're just going to finish basting this all together first. I want to make sure I don't have any changes that need to be made. I already know I need to change the shoulder dart back here. I changed it on the uh, muslin, so I know I'm going to have to cut it down a little bit on this. Well, I'm hungry. I haven't eaten. So I'm going to go eat. It's probably about 1 o'clock in the morning here, so I'm going to go eat. This is my shirt that I just made from the Pattern Master Boutique. Fits perfectly. This is one of the other designs I did. It's got a high-low, high in the front, low in the back, and I just kind of put a little bit of flounciness in here. And next video is going to be some more construction. We'll finish putting the rest of the pieces on the back. I'll show you how I have to make that change in the shoulder uh, shoulder blade dart. And uh, yeah, we're going to have some